This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum, bringing you episode 36 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this, in this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, September 5th, 1908. I will add commentary to elaborate on what was happening in Westford 114 years ago. Uh, The first section in this week's Wardsman is the About Town section. A A merry party of the Grangers left town last week Thursday for Revere Beach and Wonderland, where European sightseeing curiosities, limited of course, could be seen. The weather was of the autumn sunshine type, which with the recreation of the day left sunshine impressions on the individual expression as they gathered back home. Only about 14 answered the roll call to the exhibitions of the day. It should have been multiplied by six with some to carry. The contract for remodeling Monument Square in Lowell has been awarded to the H.C. Fletcher Company, Oak Hill, Westford. The figures were below the expectation of the city engineer. These figures were in competition with the Lawrence Granite Company of Lawrence. Judson F. Schweitzer, who lives on Bear Hill, one of the southerly suburbs of Parker Village, uh, can you imagine Parker Village having a suburb, is the only person in town who appears to have a large crop of peaches. Give him a call and take that bright, shiny dollar with you and bring home a basket and then invite in the neighbors who has not the financial shine that thou hast and see what an endorsement of the sale thou wilt have together. The Unitarian Church will open Sunday after its usual summer vacation. The scholars in the the Schober School uh, will be transported to the new school at the center instead of the Minot School. All schools open Tuesday, September 8th. James A. Walkton has sold to Mark W. Jenkins a lot of land containing about three acres on the Chamberlain Road between the Black blacksmith shop and the Putney place. This lot of land was formerly a part of the, of the Zacchaeus Reed farm and f- familiarly known as Bowen Lane. A Brookside farmer has been inquiring of his potatoes how they liked the long continued stringency and rainfall. rainfall. They report now that they are all harvested, 10 bushels planted and 20 bushels harvested. Had they been planted whole, it would have been better to have dug them the next day after planting. It would have had, it would have saved labor and sorrow. Edwin L. Edwin E. Park, who was on trial last week before Judge Pickman of Lowell for hen thieving, was found not guilty. Sidewalk evidence generally gets pretty well shaken up on the witness stand. That seems like somewhat of a surprise from what we read last week about the hen thieves. Daniel H. Sheehan is making preparations to start up his cider, vinegar, sawmill, cotton manufactory located on Tadmuck Brook near Stony Brook School. You can still visit the site of uh, that mill. It's uh, on the mill pond just off Lowell Road. Baseball. The struggle of the season in baseball lines took place at Milford, New Hampshire last Saturday between the Milford and Westford teams. Two games were played on July 4th, Westford winning the first and the second was a tie, and the Westford boys were obliged to leave to catch the cars. A later game resulted in a tie, again the Westfords being obliged to leave to catch a car. They're talking about a railroad car. And the Milford team was rather liberal with the thought that this car-catching business was only an excuse for running from defeat. But this last game, Westford put on the defiant attitude and resolved to fight it out to a final finish and that there should be no catching car, tie games in this final struggle for supremacy. The Westford boys stuck to their batting and catching and running and decoying, and one of the crack teams of New Hampshire got one of the worst whippings they have experienced for a long time when Westford defeated them by a score of 9-1. to one. Now, there are those who think that the Westford team is overestimated. Even thus may it be so, but to all the doubters of ordinary caliber, just try the batting capacity of your doubts with the Westford boys. And at the end of the game, you will have a more discouraged than doubting look. It looks now like the close of the baseball season. Uh, The next section is called The Parklands. 
Frank A. Le- Levy of Union Hill, New Jersey, was in town last week searching for his real estate lo- located at Brookside Park near Graniteville. The assessors were asked to join in the search. This park, being mostly water of the frog pond variety and steep precipice and the balance imagination on paper to help sell the park, it is a difficult task to satisfy the many lot owners that this uninhabitable frog and mosquito headquarters is their property and is identical with that thriving growing park they bought on paper. A Lowell party, when shown her property, wished the assessors were all in that hot region where water is not reported to be as abundant as at this park. Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Rhode Island are all represented in ownership in this park and still coming. It is gathering a national reputation likened to Yellowstone and Yosemite. Look for a low rate of taxes from prospective land and water sales. Uh, this Brookside Park, I'm, you probably have never heard of. It was uh, located, it was a proposed residential development that was laid out in 1905 in the area that is now the Russell Bird Sanctuary uh, near the old Stone Arch Bridge over the Stony Brook. It is referenced in tax collectors' reports of the 1910s as being, quote, uncollectible. The town acquired it by eminent domain in 1968. It was clearly a bust as a residential development. The next section is the center. Reverend and and Mrs. Charles P. Marshall and daughter Marion returned home to the Parsonage Wednesday after delightful vacation spent at Dover and Gorham, New Hampshire. While at Gorham, Mr. Marshall was joined by Charles O. Prescott and John P. Wright, and this trio of friends enjoyed a tramping trip of several days through the White Mountains. They were fortunate in having the bright, bracing weather of last week and are enthusiastic enough over their experience to hope to repeat it another season. William A. Perkins was to have joined the party, but the recent moving of his family and getting settled in a new home was undertaking enough before the commencement of his school duties. Mrs. William L. Woods and Mrs. Lizzie Hamlin with their children enjoyed a day's outing at Nantasket Beach Tuesday. The regular church services will be resumed at the Congregational Church on Sunday, September 5th. At the close of the morning service, the communion will be observed. Pleasant word comes to the Westford friends from the Perkins family in Grafton, where they are pleasantly settled. Dr. O. V. Wells assumed charge of the practice of the late Dr. Sleeper, the 1st of September. In the two years that Dr. Wells has been here, he has made many warm friends friends who wish him much success. Miss Sarah W. Loker conducted a well-attended missionary meeting Sunday evening at the Congregational Church. The subject was Dr. Cyrus Hamlin and his work in Constantinople. Dr. Hamlin was related to the Westford Hamlins and had spoken during his life a number of times at this church. Miss Mary Bunce and John A. Taylor gave well-prepared outlines of his work, and Mrs. Wheeler read a description of the city of Constantinople, where Roberts College that he founded and where he labored so long was situated. The Women's Christian Temperance Union met with Mrs. Nellie Karkin at her home on Main Street Wednesday afternoon. There was a good attendance of members present and one visitor. Miss May E. Day was added to the list of members. Various business of importance was transacted, among which was the appointment of Mrs. Frank C. Hildreth and Mrs. H. G. Osgood as delegates to the state convention to be held in Lowell the last of this month. Work progresses well on Frank Drew's new house on Main Street. Warren Karkin, Bert Hildreth, and Pearl Pearl Harmon are the men behind the hammers and saws. The appointment of a trustee of the J.V. Fletcher Library was made necessary by the resignation of William A. Perkins. At a meeting of the remaining trustees and the selectmen, Julian A. Cameron was chosen to serve until the next town meeting. And if memory serves me correctly, Julian Cameron remained on the board of trustees of the library for many years. Miss Alice L. Davis has been a recent guest of Miss Emily F. Fletcher. 
Mrs. Davis's early home was in Westford, and she was a graduate of the academy, after which she taught at Minot's Corner and Stony Brook, and later at the center. She is now the principal assistant at the Bell School in Somerville. It is after a lapse of 11 years that Miss Davis visited here, and she expre expressed much pleasure at so many changes all along the line of improvement in our village, but also with it the inevitable undercurrent of sadness that the years bring, bring in changes among families through death and removals. The next section is um, Graniteville. The members of the Albert R. Shoat Hose Company Number no. Two, under the direction of Captain J. A. Healy, were out for <coughs> were out for practice duty last Monday evening, and flushed out many of the hydrants in the village. Considerable of the work was done by the light of lanterns, but that did not interfere with the members to any event, to any extent. The regular meeting of the company will be held in its room on Monday evening, September seventh, at seven o'clock. William A. Nickerson, a former principal in the Graniteville Grammar School, has recently been appointed to a similar position in Westwood. Mr. Nickerson made many warm friends during his brief stay here, and they will be pleased to hear of his success. Jack Frost has been getting in his fine work of late. On last Saturday morning, ice had formed on a water pail that had been left out overnight at the Blodgett Brothers Farm on the Millstone Road. Uh, their farm was about halfway up the road to, the, to where the uh, radar uh, antennas are located. The next section is called Outing. Cameron Circle, Companions of the Foresters of America, held a gala day at Hillside Park, this village, last Saturday afternoon that proved to be a success in every way. The principal attraction of the afternoon was the baseball game between the Brimstones and the All-Stars. The game was closely contested for the full nine innings when the Brimstones finally won by a score of 5-3. to three. Battery, Tom McCarthy and Ledwith for the Brimstones, Bob McCarthy and Heeman for the All-Stars, umpire J.W. Harrington. After the ball game, the time was pleasantly spent in visiting the other attractions, the Dodger Act at as performed by Doris DiLorenzo. Dodger is in quotes. That's probably some kind of a, uh, a inside joke. Frank Loftus was manager of this event, and as the original faker was all to the good, the tonic, ice cream, and candy tables did a flourishing business during the afternoon. At 5.30, an excellent old-fashioned supper was served under the pines, and all who partook of the spread certainly got their money's worth. In the evening, a social dancing party was held in Healy's Hall from 7.30 till 11.30 that was largely attended. Many were present from out of town. Smiley's Orchestra of Acton furnished excellent music, and at intermission, refreshments were served. A late car for North Elmsford, North Chelmsford and Ayer conveyed the visiting people to their homes after the dance. That's they're referring to a trolley car. Mr. and Mrs. John Shackleton held a birthday reception at the home of Mrs. Dinah McMurray Saturday evening. It also being the latter's birthday, it was a very social and pleasant gathering. Many friends were present, and all was fun and mirth when supper was announced. The table was laden with an abundance of good things, while the decorations of goldenrod and asters lent an added charm not only to the table but to the rooms. Many tokens of kindly remembrance were received. The party broke up at a late hour with best wishes for many happy returns of the day. Mrs. Sophie Wamaroneka and Adam Silviza were married last Saturday at the Polish Church in Lowell, but will reside here. Her name is spelled capital S-O-F-I-E, capital W-A-M-A-R-O-N-E-K-A, and Adam's last name is spelled S-Y-L-V-E-S-A. In the Westford Town Report, Adam's last name is spelled S-Z-Y-L-I-V-I-A-N, and Sophia's name is spelled capital Z-O-F-I-A, capital W-A-J-N-O-V-O-W-S-K-S-K-A. She was 20 and he was 28, and they were married on August 29th. Well, one of the things that we find very often in the wardsmen is that the Polish names uh, were quite often misspelled uh, almost every time they were used. 
Mrs. Ida and Hilda Normington, formerly of this village but now of Worcester, have returned from their trip to England and have brought many beautiful souvenirs from the land of their birth. The next section is called Death. Uh, John Cannell died at the home of his son, John Jr., at this village on Tuesday at the advanced age of 87 years. He was born in Ireland and married Miss Bridget O'Hare there. Soon after he married, they came to Lowell, but for the last 40 years, they resided in Groton. A few weeks ago, owing to the infirmities of age, Mr. Cannell and his wife came to live with his son. The immediate cause of death was a paralytic shock. Six children, four boys, and two girls survive him. Also, 21 grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Uh, funeral services were held at St. Catherine's Church, Graniteville, Friday morning, and burial was in St. Mary's Cemetery in the town of Ayer. In, in the Westford uh, Town Report for 1908, his last name is spelled John O'Connell, not Connell. But it, that was a name that, that in a lot of the old records, in the early records in Westford was O'Connell, but later became uh, Connell. Uh, the next section is called Graniteville, and the first part of that, uh, or this paragraph, is called About the Schools. At a meeting of the Westford Board of Education held at the center on last week, Friday night, it was decided by the committee to rescind the vote previously made in relation to the closing of certain schools, and for the coming school year, all the schools will be opened as heretofore. There will be some change in the staff of teachers in the Graniteville schools during the opening of the fall term. Gerald Decatur, who formerly taught at the Namnasset School, will be the new principal, a position formerly held by William A. Nickerson. Miss Mary A. Dunn of West Chelmsford, a graduate of the Lowell Normal School, will teach the first grade, Miss Ruth Tuttle having been transferred to the center school in Westford proper. There will also be a new teacher in the Cameron School at Ford's Village, Miss Mary E. Garney of North Chelmsford, having been recently appointed to the position. Charles N. Edwards of Brookside will teach the Damnasset School at the opening of the fall term. The fall term. And that's the news in Westford for the week ending September 5, 1908. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Nick Woodbury of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions from the wardsman at the Westford Historical Society's website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for most Westford news from a century for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Alphen, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.